One day Ali liked to play with her young friends at school. At home, she had her big brother, who would often watch TV with her. But at school, one day Ali would run about, climb on the jungle gym, yell and squeal with the other children, and let her energy run free. Starting school last summer brought Wanli Ali close to others who were not from her family's people. Her people were Kuri. Many Indigenous Australians belonged to the Kuri tribes who once lived close to the earth in Eastern Australia. Wanli Ali's mother wanted her daughter to have a name from their own language. Wanli Ali is a Kuri name for Echidna, a small Australian anteater which is like a porcupine. When she feels threatened, this little animal rolls herself into a ball, causing the spikes on her back to stick up sharply all over. This gives her protection, so no other animal would dare bother her. She can walk day or night, wherever she pleases, without interference. One day Ali was like the little animal she was named after for she was a free spirit who protected herself from others by showing a spiky exterior. She didn't want to hurt anyone, she just didn't want any interference. Wanda Yali's nature was not much different to many of her people who suffered great interference when the new white people came to their lands. Kuris had once roamed widely through the mountain forests and lower lands of the three big rivers these rivers were the big, wide water serpents whose many thin tails began in the mountains. They carried water to their long, fat bodies which wound their way through the gentle slopes and plains before they ended in wide mouths of many forked tongues. These slow, lazy tongues of water spread out among mangrove swamps at the edge of the big rolling salt water. One day Ali had heard some of the old people talking about the big gatherings of Kuri clans on the soft sands between the serpents' tongues and the rolling waters. Although she lived in the mountains, one day Ali had been to such a place and played in the sand and water with her cousins. But the big gatherings had stopped long before Wanda Ali's time because the new white people made laws against walkabout living. When the white people were new to the land, they cut down the trees and covered the land with fences and signs. And so the traditional lands which the Kuri people belonged to could no longer receive and feed them. And their way of life had changed forever. Walkabout living was now only a memory which the old people would talk about when they told the Dreamtime stories. The Dreamtime stories were about the distant past, which began when the world was first formed by the travel of the great rainbow serpent. One day Ali's people knew about the stars which came to live with people. Long ago, some stars had come down from the sky when people needed help to remember the ways of the Great Spirit. Some of Wandayali's people could still see their stars, but many had forgotten about them. One day at school, Wandayali was listening closely to a story her teacher was reading to the class. As her eyes rested on teacher's face, she saw a shining white line appear through the high window above the door. It reached down to her teacher, and there on her teacher's forehead was a small, twinkling, bright star. Wandayali stared at it and blinked her eyes, but it was still there. She continued to watch the star as teacher read the story, but soon forgot about it. When teacher finished reading, Wandayali looked again at the teacher's forehead, but she could no longer see the star. One day Ali gave no more thought to the star as it was nearly playtime and she was ready for some serious outdoor activity. She went to the door to look outside at the swings and sand pit, just waiting for the children to come and play with them. She was so ready to go out to play 
that she stepped out the door and began walking toward the swings. Wandayali didn't hear her teacher call out as she stopped by the sand pit to put her hands into the soft, cool sand. Teacher came up behind her and gently called her to come back into class. But Wandayali just wanted to be free to play. She was tired of indoors and quiet talk. She loved sunshine and the bursts of energy and action that filled playtime. To push away the interfering call, Wandiali turned and shot some angry words at her teacher, then turned back once more to the fun of play. Wandiali's teacher sighed and turned back to the classroom and her other young students. That night, Wandiali dreamt she was with her people at a big family gathering, like those she had heard about near the big rolling salt water. But this dream gathering was in the mountains, close to where she lived. Here she saw many people. She felt she knew them, but could not say who they were. Then she noticed that many of them had stars on their foreheads, like the one she saw on teacher's forehead that morning. As she was talking and listening to her people in the dream, one day Ali noticed two stars in front of her eyes. They floated and danced above her eyes, no matter where she looked, but sometimes they would dip down right in front of her vision. When one day Ali woke the following morning, the first thing she remembered was the two stars. Why? Because when she opened her eyes, she saw them there in front of her, as she had seen them in her dream. She looked closely at them and saw they were different to each other. One was bright, almost white. The other was a little smaller and was a soft, glowing pink. As she watched them, their sparkle and dance seemed to fill her with such a bouncy, happy feeling that as Wandayali jumped out of bed, she almost shouted with joy, Sparky and Pink, that's what I'll call you. Wandayali soon forgot about Sparky and Pink in the busy morning. She hadn't had breakfast before she had to run to the gate to catch the school bus. Wandayali's mother pressed a thick piece of toast into Wandayali's hand as she helped her put her school bag around her shoulders. But on the bus to school, when Wandayali looked out the window, there were Sparky and Pink, bouncing and darting, twinkling and shining. She could still see the trees, sky and clouds, but the two stars stayed in sight until the bus finally arrived at school. Wandayali was very happy that morning. She ate some of the breakfast food, which the school had ready for children who missed breakfast at home, and then played with her friends until class time. During the day, Sparky and Pink often showed themselves to her, especially when Wandayali was quiet and still and looking intently at someone or something or when she listened to someone speaking. At times, the two stars would become quiet also. Instead of bouncing and darting in a happy dance, they would float softly and settle quietly, glowing and vibrating in a soothing way. Sparky and Pink were like Wandiali's new friends who really understood her. When she was happy, they would dance and sparkle. When she was tired or sad, they would float and vibrate gently. One day, not long after Sparky and Pink became Wandiali's stars, Wandiali was with her class in the school library. This was one of the indoor times she liked. The library had books and games she and her friends could pick and choose from. When she read books, even though indoors, Wandiali felt she was in other places seeing and doing many wonderful things. She didn't have to write or do numbers, which were not as easy or as much fun as reading. Today, Wandayali was reading a fascinating book about stars. She had become especially interested in stars since Sparky and Pink first appeared. She wanted to know more about all kinds of stars. Suddenly, one day Ali heard her name. She looked up to see that all her classmates were gone 
and her teacher was standing at the door looking at her. One day Ali wanted to finish reading her book. She was about to impatiently push away the interference she felt when suddenly Sparky appeared and danced a little dance in teacher's eye. One day Ali smiled at Sparky's dance. Then Pink appeared in teacher's other eye, vibrating gently, just like she remembered a purring kitten does when she strokes its soft fur. One day Ali watched and smiled. Then she heard teacher saying, Come along, one day Ali. We're going back to our classroom. You can borrow the book and read it at home. One day Ali jumped up and checked out her library book to take home. Sparky and Pink had done their job for the day. One day Ali had listened to her teacher. She was learning that indoors was also fun, but in a quiet, purring way, like Sparky and Pink, when they softly float and vibrate. Do you see stars? The stars are with us all the time. Sometimes we can see them. Some people talk to their stars. What do you think they would talk about? If stars could make a sound, what do you think they would sound like? Can you draw some stars? You see the night stars in the sky. Can you see patterns that stars make? Have a look for Orion's belt, the three stars in a row. 